Hi there, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be having some fun with stencils and Distress Oxide ink for some Halloween slimline cards using brand new Colorado Craft Company stamps and then some of my favorite stencils from Lawn Fawn, Simon Says Stamp, and Tim Holtz. We're going to start with this slimline nested rectangle that I have die cut with a Simon Says Stamp die and we're going to take some of the uh, Sitting Witch Lovely Legs stamps from the new stamp set from the release. Um, I absolutely love these this image and the big sentiments are perfect for a slimline style card and we're going to start by stamping the Lovely Legs image with a black ink for Copic coloring. I'm going to stamp this right here on my slimline uh, panel and then we are going to stamp it again on masking paper, cut it out with scissors, and mask this image. A little tip for masking this is try to cut right on the black line as this is going to provide um, It'll kind of be inside of the black line of the stamped image, if that makes sense, so that when you apply your ink around the image, it will go right up next to that black line and not leave kind of a shadow around the image. So there is my mask. Next, we're going to take the Wicked Sentiment from the stamp set. I really, really wanted to use Something Wicked This Way Comes from this stamp set. Um, and so I'm going to stamp Wicked with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. I'm just working to make sure I get that straight and I want it to appear that our cute little lovely legs image is sitting on top of this wicked greeting. Now there's also a Halloween greeting in the same style which would be cute if you wanted to kind of swap that out for that. There is also the word happy, so you could make happy Halloween and the phrase, I put a spell on you, which is so cute. So I stamped that a couple times with my clear embossing ink. I've got my white embossing powder handy. We're going to ink that up, heat emboss. And then I did opt to take a sentiment from another stamp set that we'll be using to finish off our greeting here in a little bit, but we will do that after we've ink blended the background. So I've got, I want to stamp and emboss Wicked, but then I want to build the word something above the word Wicked, and this way comes underneath the word Wicked. So I am just going to heat emboss this sentiment really well. Um, I think I held my, not yet, must be, but uh, when I heat embossed the rest of my greeting, I held the heat tool a little too long next to my paper, and luckily I didn't scorch the paper, but I did scorch my mask. So my mask will have a little brown burned mark on it, but that is okay, because at least it didn't happen on the paper. So there's my panel. I'm going to go ahead and add something, and this way comes. Another idea for this, instead of doing it this way where you emboss first and then you have the embossed resist as you apply the ink over this and the embossed area resists the ink, you could always ink blend the background first, let it dry completely, uh, ink blend, stencil, let it dry completely, and then come back and stamp and emboss. I opted to do it this way as I wasn't very patient and I didn't want to wait for my background to dry, but a lot of times I will stamp and emboss second. There is no way better than another necessarily, um, so definitely keep that in mind. In fact, I'll tell you on my second card, I actually stamped and embossed the greetings um, after after I did everything, I did not use them as the embossed resist, and I did let it sit overnight before I came back and stamped and embossed. So here is my sentiment. And there is that little burn mark on my mask, and I'm double checking it, hoping I did not burn my paper, and I didn't. So now my mask's in place, our greetings are there. It now comes the magical fun part of building a night sky. I love purple, blue, and black for Halloween cards. In fact, you'll notice that this card has absolutely no orange on it. 
So I start with applying some of the Wilted Violet Distress Oxide ink in several places on my panel, and then I'm going to do a really generous layer of prize ribbon. I kind of switch out whether I use Blueprint Sketch or prize ribbon or chipped sapphire with the wilted violet, but I do really like a purple, a blue, and a black, um, usually kind of more of a royal blue. And so I just like to add a couple of little areas of that, and then I work my way up to a nice intensity. So you'll notice after I apply the blue, I'm gonna go back with purple and blend that out into the blue a little bit. Then we're gonna go around the the edges of our panel mostly with black soot, which brings it all together. And at first it is really dark and it's very noticeable that there is a border all the way around. But if you go back with your other blending tools and just kind of keep working those colors into each other, you end up with the most beautiful results. So we're going back with a nice layer of blueprint sketch now that mask is completely protecting our lovely legs image and we're just going to keep adding that color that looks fantastic i'm going to spritz my whole panel with a little water from a distress sprayer held very high so i get the smallest droplets possible i'm going to blot those dry let this dry for a minute we're going to clean our waffle flower stencil mat you guys know i love this waffle flower stencil mat i don't even know if i can stencil without it now i think it is so phenomenal and then we're going to bring our background back and buff away any ink sitting on top of the embossed area. I'm just using a dry part of my rag to buff that away and look at that bright white greeting. Now, before we remove the mask, we want to do some stenciling and I love the Lawn Fawn stencils. These are their slim stencils made for slimline style cards. There's a bigger cloudy border and a smaller cloudy border. Um, either one will work here. I think I end up using the uh, bigger of the two designs. A little tip though, I am using Hero Arts Unicorn White ink to stencil my clouds. And I pressed the ink pad into my stencil mat. You could also use an acrylic block or your glass mat. And I'm picking the ink up from that ink that I've pressed onto the surface. And the reason is, is your blending brush is likely going to pick up some of that Distress Oxide ink from the background and you don't want to contaminate your ink pad. So by applying the ink to my mat, I can easily pick that ink up, blend it all out and create this really fun effect. Look at that sky, how cool is that? Something I forgot to mention, the lovely legs image is dangling a spider from her finger and you will notice you can hardly see the spider now. That's okay. We are going to restamp this in a little bit. I always leave my um, stamped image in my Misty until I'm completely done with my card in case I need to restamp anything or redo part of the card. In this case, we are for sure going to need to restamp at least just that little section there to bring the spider back in. But for now, I'm not going to worry about it and we are going to start some coloring. Um, we're also going to paint the letters for the sentiment uh, but let's color in our image first with some Copic markers. I started with Nina cardstock specifically so I could color with my Copic markers. I like this cardstock for Copic coloring. I'm starting with the skin with E13 and 11, uh, just a little bit on her arms and a little of the leg that you see there. Otherwise, the majority of the image is of course the legs and her little skirt, anything kind of from the waist down there and also her hands that are encased in some fun gloves. Now I opted to keep her outfit to kind of blend match the sky. So we're using some blue violet colors. I have um, listed them here on the screen and I have listed them on my blog post that coordinates with this video. You can find that information by clicking the link underneath the video here. That will take you to my blog post 
and you can uh, get that information as far as the marker colors I used a little bit slower than what they might go by on the screen here. I love blue violets and I am simply, I kind of blended it out and then I went back with some darker colors to add in extra detail. I purposely left that little like underskirt, the little ruffle there underneath her little skirt because I want that to be some yellow red colors and I know it says red because YR colors are yellow red but I like YR colors for yellow and I use them a lot. So this is YR 23, 31, and 30 and I like that for the little bit of the underskirt and it kind of just brings in some of that glow and magical feeling to this image. Um, we're going to work on the rest of her outfit now. I'm just kind of blending my blue-violet colors up here into the top of the image. It just needs to be a little illusion. It does not have to be super perfect up here. Just kind of want it to fill in all of that area. How cute are those boots, by the way, that she has on? They are just the perfect little witch's boots. And then the like the little thigh-high uh, stockings are just adorable with the stripe. And surprisingly I, I kind of struggled with knowing what I wanted to color them because normally I'd probably go like orange and yellow but I just didn't feel like orange was going to work here and I'm so so glad I didn't go with orange. Um, I did use a little YR23 for her belt buckle and then we're going to use some cool grays for the belt itself. Cool grays will also be used for her boots and then the gloves are going to match the rest of her outfit with blue violet colors, but the tights, that's gonna be a yellow and white stripe. And like I said, might be one of my favorite parts of this image. So just coloring in that belt, it's coming to life, isn't it? How much fun is this? Let's go ahead and do her gloves. I think the gloves are a really fun touch here, and I love that uh, this little witch here has gloves. I will tell you that I think I was channeling Bewitched vibes here for my card. I don't know what it is, but just kind of the, the sky and stuff just gave me those kind of vibes. We'll finish your little gloves here. And then I did go back with my darkest color, Blue Violet 17, and deepened and darkened some of those natural places in the image where it's dark. I even really kind of like how her outfit blends into the background. Now we're gonna add our yellow stripe to the tights. Why are 23 and 31 mostly? And then a very, very light gray is going to be the white section just so they have a little shading, but we don't want to add too much color. And about this point, I was like, yep, this is cute and I love it. Because I will say I did struggle trying to figure out what color exactly I wanted to use for those tights. Some cool grays now for the boots and then the little uh, ribbon buckle around the boots, I guess uh, we'll call it. I am going to do that in yellow as well. Just some nice cool gray colors to really show them off. So I started with the dark, but I used it pretty minimalistic and blended out a lot more with the lighter two shades. How cute is that? Love, love, love it. Just kind of adding in some darker areas again. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the second leg. Let's just go ahead and start with the boot. And this is when you're coloring, if there was anything that maybe your mask didn't either completely cover or you didn't get it masked super great, you can kind of draw that back in at this point if you need to. Like the tips of these boots was pretty tiny, um, especially on the one on the left. 
And so I worked kind of with my marker to kind of add that detail back into the design. Then we'll work our way up the other leg. Oh, I guess actually I added my cool grays first for that little bit of shadow. And I'm not even coloring the whole thing, just kind of softening the cool gray. Love, love, love it. So much fun. Now this is a pretty simple card. So basically we are almost done at this point. I don't really add a whole lot else as far as stamping goes to this image. We are gonna add another little stamped phrase and then we are going to pretty much fill the rest of the background with sparkly, shiny embellishments like little uh, shooting stars, I think they're called. Yes, they're Lucy's Little Thing shooting stars and also some little itty bitty silver star confetti. Adding in that cool gray again, blending. Isn't that cute? I just love it. Now I want to draw a little bit of attention to that big wicked sentiment since it really is the rest of our uh, scene here. And I am taking some of these starry colors. I'm using that white gold and a water brush pen and I'm picking up the color and I'm painting it right onto my card. It's going to make that outline part, that thicker part of each letter, have a little bit of shimmer and shine to it. You can still see through it just a tiny bit, but for the most part, it, it's just got that white glittery look, adds to the magical, spooky feel of our card. Now we are going to take embellishments and add, oh, actually I apologize. I'm going to take my black ink and I'm going to re-stamp my spider. Now it may not stamp super dark over the uh, Distress Oxide background. I really kind of wish I'd used Versafine for the spider, but I went back to my Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. So what I ended up doing was taking a black pen and I just kind of draw over the spider, uh, the string, and then the spider itself just to make it a little more bold. But I did use Versafine Onyx Black ink to stamp Happy Halloween, which is from another stamp set. Um, from this release. This is the Big and Bold Witch's Broom set, which has a really great big Witch's Broom. If you know anything about the Big and Bold series and lots of fun greetings in that too. And I really love that you can mix and match. And I thought the Halloween Wishes was just a fun little way to kind of finish off um, the decorative or scene part, I guess, of our card with that cute little greeting. So it's right there to the left of her boot underneath the word um, comes in the phrase this way comes. And that Versafine black ink looks really great against the Distress Oxide background. So the final thing we're going to do, of course, is embellish. We are going to add a whole big scattering of the mini silver star confetti, the little shooting stars. I really wanted the combination of both. And then when you tip the card in the light, you get that shimmer and shine from them, which again is what I was going for. So this is spooky fun instead of kind of like creepy. Or I always talk about liking um, kind of more of the, the spooky cute, I guess I'd call it. Um, my next card's probably a little bit more on the creepy side, although I know that my kids <laughs> would love it uh, just because we used to watch like The Walking Dead a lot and stuff. And, and so the whole zombie feel of that card, I know that they would uh, think was funny. Plus they're all like Halloween. So um, it's gonna be a little more on the creepy side, but I hope I add some fun elements to it. Something about this card I did not do because I really kind of couldn't figure out where to place it and it just didn't, I probably could have used the smallest. Let me start again. 
I wanted, I thought about using the moon masks from Tim Holtz on this card, but ultimately decided not to. I am going to use them on the next card though. Um, so just something to keep in mind that you can mix and match your stencils, which I will be doing on my next card. Um, really might be kind of a cute element to add to this, especially if you kind of maybe just do a partial moon and have the cloud like coming up out of the clouds. There is my background. Now this slimline nested rectangle is slightly smaller than slimline size. A slimline card base typically is three and a half by eight and a half inches. This panel is gonna be three and a quarter by eight and a quarter, meaning it leaves us with a beautiful white border all the way around that mats this panel perfectly and also ties in to the bright white embossing of our greeting. Um, I always like to start with a little sprinkling of embellishments. You can see that I've gone back and I am filling in because I felt like the sky needed lots. Look at that when we tip the panel, so good. Now, I know I do this to almost every card. I'm not gonna do this to the zombie card because I just didn't feel like it worked, but I did add a little black heart embellishment right there underneath Halloween Wishes. We did black because of course that ties into our card much, much better than a little red heart would. Let's grab our slimline card base, pop this darling little lovely legs uh, sitting witch image on, and our first card is all finished. So for our second card, I'm actually going to use the Zombie Friends stamp set. And instead of doing the landscape style slimline, we're gonna do a portrait style slimline. So I love how the hand is coming up out of the earth, but we're gonna have this moon up high out in the distance. We're gonna do a creepy cool green sky here. I was totally inspired by a card that my friend um, Jennifer Kinney did on her, or shared on her Instagram with a green green Halloween sky. And so that is where my inspiration came for this particular card. And then of course, I could hardly wait to use Tim's moon masks for uh, some sort of design. And I love that they work for all kinds of things. I have used uh, some of his moon masks that came with his stamp timber set, you might remember, for a Christmas card, which is fantastic. But they work equally as well for Halloween and many other times as well. This is the medium sized moon mask. I did create a mask for the zombie hand so that I could ink around it and then I'm using the solid part of the uh, moon to mask off an area in the top part of my card before taking Twisted Citron, Lucky Clover, and Black Soot Distress Oxide inks and inking the background. I'm going to start with Twisted Citron. I like to start light and then we'll work our way darker. So a lot of Twisted Citron will eventually get covered up, but there's elements, brightness of it, this color, kind of around the zombie hand that really still show up beautifully. Then we're going to work Lucky Clover around this. I love Twisted Citron and Lucky Clover together. I think it is a beautiful color combination just any time. I know I'm using it for Halloween, but I love it for like spring style cards as well, like a spring green. So fun. And then we're going to take black soot and this is where the magic comes. I love black soot. Black soot works with everything. If you want to deepen, darken, and really kind of richen the colors underneath, because you can see, you can still see some of that green coming through. You could see the blues and purples of the first card as well. It really is a beautiful effect. So we're just gonna work that ink around the edges of our panel. Again, it might be a little harsh and a little dark right here. I'm so sorry that I was a little too far down um, in my camera. I did not notice it. I think I zoom out here in a minute. Um, but I'm just gonna work some of that black ink. But just like our first card, we're gonna go back with our green blending brush and soften some of those lines. There we go. I finally noticed. Thank goodness. And then I'm going to remove my mask. So the solid mask is removed and I actually took a brown blending brush. I think this has like a combination of gathered twigs and antique linen on it. 
quite honestly, from something else I've done. And I did not even ink it up. I did not even get my inks out, my ink pads out. I just took that brown and gave a nice little coating for my moon. And then I'm gonna take my black soot blending brush, and I did not re-ink it either uh, from adding the background color. And I am going to use the second moon mask to give the moon detail. And look at that. Now, I know it doesn't look fantastic quite yet. We have to remove the mask before you start to kind of see where we're going. But before we do that, we need some creepy bats. The layered bats from the Stamp Timber Simon Says Stamp Release. They're going to continue to be one of my favorite stencils because I absolutely love them. We are going to blend these with a pretty heavy hand of Black Soot Distress Oxide ink. I did flip the mask over, so I think it's supposed to kind of go the other direction. There's no right or wrong, though. And we are going to flip it over so the bats are going off into the upper right corner. And then we're going to remove our masks. Or a mask. I know that it kind of tore in one spot and then that one was in a couple of sections. Love, love, love this. I am gonna spritz this with water. I'm gonna blot it dry so there's a little distressing going on in the background. Let's get all my dirty stencils out of the way and all of that good stuff before we color this in. So I'm kinda of just moving some things out of the way. We're spritzing with water. Again, I like to hold the Dispress sprayer up pretty high, especially if I'm wanting uh, smaller droplets, and I'm only gonna depress the sprayer slightly um, so that uh, the droplets are pretty small. I'm really digging this. I know it's a little creepier than what I normally do, but I thought it was fun. And like I said, if you have the right recipient, this is a fantastic stamp set. Pretty easy coloring as far as this goes. I'm using a combination of warm grays for the, for the hand coming up out of the earth. I wanted it to kind of be creepy, decomposed, I guess, um, kind of look for this. And then the ground is gonna be all in earth tones. So definitely just kind of uh, quick, easy coloring. Definitely went in with my dark colors first to add in all of that great shading and detail. And then we're going to blend out with our lighter colors. You can always go back in and add more shadows and whatnot as needed. Basically, at this point, we are almost finished with our card. This is the card that I came back the next day and stamped and embossed my sentiment. I decided to use two phrases from the uh, Zombie Friends stamp set for my card. We will be using uh, You Are a True Friend. I trust you to not leave me for dead during a zombie apocalypse. Like I said, I know my kids would appreciate this. It's going to go to probably one of my older kids for Halloween because probably my son. He will think this is super cool. Definitely have to know your audience with things like this, but I thought it was funny. Uh, there's also like, you can use thank you uh, for bringing me back to life. If I were a zombie, I'd eat you first. It's just kind of all fun and in good humor um, for sure. But I really liked the true friend zombie apocalypse because he will find that reference hilarious. So here I'm going to go down along the ground and use some earth tones so it looks like the hands coming up out of the ground. And I think the green really shows off the elements of this card and it's something different for me. I kind of stretched myself creatively. I tend to gravitate towards my blues and purples for Halloween cards backgrounds. And so, uh, like I said, when I saw my friend's card with the green background, I knew I had to do something with that. And this is the perfect stamp set for that. It would work for lots of things. And in fact, think about this. If you did the lovely legs image from the first card against a green background, you could totally, uh, I could see doing her outfit and her tights in a completely different color way that would really show off the green background. So definitely kind of think outside of the box, if you will, as far as Halloween cards go. It is really fun to try different color combinations.
Um, I should have mentioned as well, I did use that same slimline nested rectangle die from Simon Says Stamp to die cut my slimline panel. You can also use a paper trimmer. I love the look, the nice finished perfect die cut look of uh, frame dies, whether it's rectangle, rectangles, slimline rectangles, mini slimline rectangles, circles, whatever it might be. Um, I think I actually use my Distress Sprayer after coloring. It's totally fine. It will not affect the alcohol ink colored images at all, but the Distress Oxide, you can see resists, or not resists, oxidizes when that water hits it, and I like that distressing in the background as I think it adds to the look and feel of the finished card design. All right, let's just kind of fast forward. It is the next day. I'm going to come in. I'm going to take my sentiments. I actually laid them out the night before because that's what I'm doing here, but I let my background completely air dry so I didn't have to hit it with a heat tool at all to speed up the drying process. When at all possible, I usually like to let my Distress um, Oxide backgrounds dry first. Now I'm going to take my sentiments ink them up with clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder so it really sets off against the background but yet the focus is still on our creepy little zombie scene so i'm just going to sprinkle this on heat emboss with white then we are going to finish with a scattering of gold star confetti so i used silver and then kind of the iridescent shooting stars on the first card. This card is getting uh, a scattering of gold. I thought the gold, I like the gold with the green background and then the yellow-ish of the moon uh, better than silver for this one. And so that's kind of where I went there. Now I did notice that I didn't get a very good stamped impression for the letter E. I think I didn't press my Misty very well. Um, so I'm actually going to line it back up, re-stamp it, add a little more embossing powder and fix that. A couple more quick notes here. I did take a black pen and kind of drew back over where the ground is exploding from the bottom. When you apply Distress Oxide ink over a stamped image, oftentimes um, it kind of mutes that part of the stamped image if you're not masking it off. Obviously I didn't want to mask off those little pieces, so I'm just going to kind of go back over them with a black pen to give that definition. And then, like I mentioned, we're going to take some gold star confetti and add that all over the background. I totally love the bats um, in the background here. I love combining different stencils with stamped images to really build amazing scene cards. I'm using a little bit of liquid glue and an embellishment wand to pick those up and place them all over the background. Again, we're going to take a slimline card base measuring three and a half by eight and a half inches and place this on there. It has the nice white border all the way around since this is three and a quarter by eight and a quarter inches. So let's grab my card base background and pop this little spooky panel right in place. And then I will show you both cards side by side, two completely different looks, but both featuring a distress ink back or distress oxide, pardon me, background with layered stenciling. It adds so much to your um, Distress Oxide background, and it is a fantastic way to build amazing scene cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these stenciled Halloween background cards featuring Colorado Craft Company October 2021 release stamps. The supplies I use to create my cards are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring Colorado Craft Company stamps and dies that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.